Hey, what's up guys, Eugene from Pentland Designs, and today we're gonna to be going over the basics of working with joints in Autodesk Fusion 360. So when you're making design with multiple parts, joints allow you to animate the movement between the two. So right here I have the design for my wallet I've been working on for a while, it's a new iteration I haven't released as of yet. Um, so if I grab the lid here, you can see that pulls that lever on the side down, which makes the part come out in the end. So through using joints in Fusion 360, it allows you to see the animation of how a part will actually interact in the real world, as well as being able to do some testing to make sure everything will function as intended before you go around making the physical piece. So in Fusion, there are seven different types of joints that you could work with. The first one that we have here is a rigid joint, which essentially means I have a block here and there's a screw or bolt going down through it. It means that if I move this block, this bolt is going to stay in place and move along with it. Next one that we have is a revolute joint. So what that does is that it allows you to have an object that will spin around. So you could see on this model clock that I made, the hour hand will spin all the way around the clock. Next we have a slider joint and that's just, you know, you have a rail here, piece slides back and forth. After that is cylindrical, so I have like a little bolt lock here that I can pull this to the side and pull this down, have this locked in place. Pin slot, so we have a pin here and a slot that I can move along, so I can click and drag this, and this slot will be able to rotate around and maintain in a position along with the pin. Planar, so I have a little, supposed to be like a air hockey rink. Uh, so I can move this puck around and it will just move around around this entire plane that we have here and Then lastly we have a ball joint Which just allows you to take this one point and then rotate it in all three degrees around To be able to make a joint you need to have two things you need to have two separate components so right here I have the clock base and the clock arm and then when you're creating the joint, you need to have the position in which the joint will be interacting with each other. So um, what we're going to be doing right now is creating an as-built joint, which basically means that all the parts are already in the position that they need to be for the joint to function as intended. Um, so this is going to be whenever you're working within a single file that, you know, I built the clock base and then I made a sketch of the arm right on top of it. So it's already where it needs to be. Um, if you're working with a project that has multiple parts being imported into it, you'd use a regular joint, and I'll get to that a little bit later. So all I'm going to do is go to Assemble As Built Joint. Um, I'm going to click Continue because I was just dragging some stuff around. It's going to go back to its original position. Uh, I'm going to set the type of joint to be Revolute, and this process will apply for pretty much all the different types of joints. You're just selecting the two components, setting a position, and then adjusting any of the parameters after that. So when you're making a joint, you're always going to make sure you're selecting the object that you want to be interacting or moving first. So in this case, we're going to be selecting the arm of the clock. And then the second component we're going to be selecting is the base of the clock. Last thing here is that it wants you to select a position. So when I put my cursor over the clock base, you can see there's all these different points to try snapping to. Um, we're going to just click in the middle of this clock base, and it's pretty easy to get to. Um, on certain designs, it may be a little bit more difficult to get to because it will snap out of where you want it to, and I may click here instead of directly in the middle. So what you can do is if you have your cursor over the face that you want to be selecting the point, if you hold down control, it will just automatically snap to the nearest point on that face. It makes it very easy to be able to get to the point that you want. So we selected that middle point. And then you can see it automatically starts animating what the movement of the object will be. There's also this axis option, which it already correctly set it to Z axis. Um, sometimes with other types of joints, it may get it incorrect. So if I set this to X axis, you can see it's quite clearly revolving in the wrong direction. So we're just going to keep that at Z and then that is good to go. So you can see in this animation, everything is functioning properly. When I go to actually make the adjustment, and try to drag it myself. So I should just be able to left click and drag on this arm. You can see it's just moving the whole body around. And that's because we don't have any of these pieces like fixed in space. 
Uh, so what we need to do is make an object that's not going to move. So in this case, it's going to be the clock base. It's going to be in that one point, and you're never going to have that move around. So I'm going to right click on clock base, and then I'm going to go to ground. I'm going to just click continue again because I moved the position. It's going to go back to where it started. And you can see there's this small little pin icon that shows next to clock base now. So if I try clicking and dragging on the clock base, it's not going anywhere. And now we can also see when I revolve around with this arm, it's moving as intended and everything else isn't moving around. The process for making pretty much any of the other joints is exactly the same. So just giving you one more example is if I go to slider, um, we're going to make sure the rail itself is grounded, which I already have it set to. And then we'll make an as-built joint. So I will select on, click on the slider first and then the rail. I'm going to set the type to be slider, and then i got to select the position in which it's going to be sliding around. So I'm going to click this middle point here, and you can see it's moving on the incorrect axis. So I'm just going to keep clicking through them until I find the correct one. So not X, and it's going to be Y. So now it's moving as intended. I can click OK. I already have this model grounded, so it's not going to have an issue when trying to click things and move them around. Now, the last thing is if you're importing an object into your file and it's not going to already be in the correct position. So if I hide this and I go to import object joint, you can see here I have this IGIS bearing um, that's already on here. And that is actually from a separate file that we have. And you could see that from this base feature icon that we have over here. So if I go into my files you can see i have this model of this iris bearing what we're going to do is we're going to make the same joint going on the other rail that we have right next to here so i'm just going to right click on the file that we want to be bringing in that we want to make a joint with and i'm going to go to insert into current design you're going to make sure you have your parent component selected um, if i had rod selected it would be a sub um, component of that and that's not what we want so we want to make sure we're putting everything in the correct groups so I'm going to go to insert into current design try that again insert into current design there we go okay uh, so you can see we have it right here in the middle and it's not going to be in the correct position um, I could rotate this so it's 90 degrees and if for something as simple as this I could just drag it and then it's in the correct position but a lot of the times it's not that simple so I'm going to leave everything as it was to start and I click OK. So now instead of doing as built joint we're just going to do a regular joint so I'll just click joint component one so now instead of it just selecting the entire component we have to select the position that we want it to be around so we're going to do the middle of this and once again what I'm going to be doing is just holding down control and then I can scroll through all the different points that I could be working with. So I'll do the middle point there, and then cursor over the rod, do the middle point in the rod. It rotates it around, but you can see the axis that it's moving in is incorrect. So we're going to try changing it to be the Z axis, and there we go. Now we have an imported joint um, made from an IGIS bearing. So that kind of goes over the basics of how you start working with joints in Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, some point in the future, I'll be making a more advanced tutorial in terms of being able to set limitations on how everything will move around. So say an example of my wallet, you could see it opens and this card is being pushed up while it's going and it actually doesn't let me push any farther than this. So, um, you know, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and see a more advanced tutorial on how to work with joints. All right. Thanks.